we continue coverage of a story, uh, and I'm going to uh, tip my hat to the Herald today, which has followed up the story at various times, though not with any, it would seem, um, real enthusiasm from the bosses. A uh, uh, reporter called Kate McNamara has done excellent work on it. And I first just want to update you on the story that the Herald broke yesterday afternoon, and that is that a second government agency is reviewing the process by what which it engaged Gannon Ormsby, the husband of Government Minister Nanaya Mahuta. The Department of Conservation has now launched a probe into a contract that signed with Gannon Ormsby's, Ormsby's firm to look at shaping and influencing how to embed young people within the Department of Conservation and scope opportunities to influence change. Um, the De Deputy Director of Public Affairs at DOC, Sia Ashton, so that means spin merchant, has confirmed that an internal review is underway into whether departmental processes and policies were properly followed in relation to the contract worth some $52,000, that's excluding GST, and the fact that the contract was not completed. Apparently this review began last month and the department intends to conclude its work by the end of October. Don't forget too, the Ministry of the Environment also undertook an internal review of a contract involving Gannon Ormsby and two of his relatives, also relatives, one would therefore presume of the minister, to a working group in 2020. But there is a third contract where major questions are also being asked. It was a kind of suicide uh, it, was, it was Tamanga Paho, the Ministry for Māori Affairs. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was 2021, 2020, and it was a kind of retreat uh, around youth suicide that Gannon Ormsby or his uh, firm got the contract for. To find out more about this and why it is, and I'm just going to say it, why it looks so flippin' dodgy, we are joined by the National MP for Pakaranga, Simeon Brown, who's been asking many questions, written questions of uh, government and ministers on this issue. Simeon, welcome to the program. Oh, look, just quickly morning, while George. you're there, um, surprised at the news of the passing of Queen Elizabeth? Yeah, look, I uh, appreciate that, um, Sean. Yeah, it's very sad news. Um, obviously, she's um, been the Queen for... Uh, 70 years and for most New Zealanders that's their entire lifetime and so um, she's provided a sense of stability to New Zealand and the world and I think that's going to be sorely missed um, so my yeah, my thoughts are with her family and um, and long live the king Alright, All right, let's get into this then Simeon Brown, we've received information and I'm sure you've seen it as well that a and I just want to start off by summing it up and then I want your comment on, on, on this. Gannon Ormsby or, or Ka Awatea gets a contract from TPK to run a little sort of suicide retreat for people. Um, it's around a $25,000, $30,000 job. And in his proposal is the suggestion that his wife, who strangely enough was the associate minister of TPK at the time, would appear or present at this conference and be paid a couple of grand for her trouble. Is that correct? That, that's what it looks like on the surface. And, I mean, firstly, um, this was not released initially under the Official Information Act. The names were all uh, redacted. Um, and so it's been a lot of work um, by a number of people to get those, uh, to get the unredacted. So let, let's, just, let's just hold it there. So the official release of information... <coughs> attempted to cover up or obscure the fact that the minister was going to be part of this? Correct, correct. Wow. On what grounds and would so you do that? Well, look, I, I don't know. I mean, I was just, I read the unredacted version now and um, it lists the Nanaia Mahuta as someone who's going to provide um, assistance to this uh, work, which, of course, as you've rightly pointed out, she's also the Associate Minister for the Department issuing this contract. Um, and it lists her expertise as governance and international relations. Now, um, at the time this contract was signed, she was the Minister for Foreign Affairs and for Local Government and for Associate Māori Development. Um, and so, look, there are serious questions that need to be asked around, um, around how this process was undertaken, um, how conflicts were managed. But, I mean, just the fact that the Minister herself was going to be uh, giving... Well, basically a paid person delivering part of the contract, and that was part of the proposal, 
I think um, should shock most New Zealanders that this is what's happening under under um, under this government. Okay, this was the proposal that her husband Gannon Ormsby put forward yes. to TPK. It is also my understanding, though, that he breached, if you like, the rules of the tender, which was that people who presented shouldn't be get paid. Yeah, look, there's absolutely there's so questions to be asked around that. Uh, my understanding is that the, the minister didn't end up actually providing work um, to this particular um, on this particular piece of work, but the fact that she was listed um, as someone who was going to um, should have been raising big alarm bells around yeah. the whole process. Yeah. And well, the talking contract. of alarm bells, I presume when TPK get this tender they see the massive potential conflict of interest that exists here and they flag that, I don't know, with the appropriate minister, with the appropriate authority. They say, hey, 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 there appears to be a conflict of interest here. We don't want any surprises. That happened, didn't it? they should have gone straight to the Public Service Commission to seek advice. Uh, And and the other, other issue behind all of these contracts is that they all appear to have not been put out to tender. So they've all been based on a sole source provision where the ministry has effectively gone out and found a particular organisation, which always in each of these cases has been Kaawatea Services Limited, uh, and then effectively gone about a sole source contract without any tender process to ensure that uh, there aren't other people who can do the work. And I guess this is the fundamental point. In, In New Zealand, we are a small country and we understand that from time to time conflicts of interest will arise and the reality is it's how you manage those and mitigate the risks is critical and so in these cases where there is a conflict or a perceived conflict of interest the best thing to do would be to put it out to an open tender to test the market to see if there were other people who could do the work who may have had the same or better expertise uh, and to ensure that if, if and if didn't want to flick their, their spouse a couple of lazy grand in her own portfolio well, in the process. And so there are ways, there are checks and balances, there are appropriate processes, there are procurement rules around all of these things to make sure this stuff doesn't happen. And so we've National has written to the Public Service Commission saying, look, you've got four contracts now. Two of them are under investigation. They all appear to have been issued on a sole source basis. Um, you've got this issue with the the minister herself being effectively identified as someone who's going to work underneath one of these contracts. This raises a serious number of questions which I think needs to be raised and elevated beyond internal investigations to actually the Public Service Commission coming in and saying have the appropriate rules been followed what's happened and get to the bottom of this because this is looking very untidy. Okay well uh, the Prime Minister says everyone involved in this in an official capacity says all conflicts of interest were identified and handled appropriately. Well I note in the contract with Te Pune Kōkiri um, the uh, in written questions uh, I, I, well, under, under the Official Information Act it said that there was um, no serious conflicts of interest identified oh. Um, and so when I when I asked um, the minister what serious conflicts means, um, he referred me to uh, the department saying that it wasn't um, his. I had to go to the Speaker of the House to actually get him to answer that particular question um, because as he's the appro- Willie Jackson as the appropriate minister was refusing to answer it. But the reality is there's definitely a conflict here and there's definitely something that needed to be dealt with. And so... Hence why we've gone to the Public Service Commission and asked for a wider investigation. Okay. And you're saying, Simia, then there are now four contracts given to Gannon Normsby's company, and he does seem to be expert in everything. None of them went through a tender process. It was all shoulder tap stuff. That's what that's what it appears to be so. And so, again, this raises questions around how conflicts are being managed because, ultimately, if they went through a tender process uh, and that his company and his skills were the best in New Zealand... Um, and that there were appropriate ways to manage the conflict and make sure that there was no, you know, and those, 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 they were identified, they were declared, and they were appropriately managed, then I think New Zealanders would have some level of confidence in the process. Um, but that didn't happen. Okay. And so, again, we need to go back to the Public Service Commission and say, actually, what's happening here in, your depart- in the Department of Okay, government? for those who do not work, walk the hallowed halls of power inside the Beltway in Wellington, how much power does the Public Service Commission have to investigate here? They've got legislative power to do this. 
under the Public Service Act. All right. Have they responded yet to your request other than... They've acknowledged, igno- they've acknowledged, acknowledged it. Received. Uh, they've acknowledged my, my request. Uh, I wrote the letter last week, um, so I'll be writing again with the new information, uh, obviously. Um, but uh, they've acknowledged the request and um, we're waiting upon them to... Uh, to decide whether they will open an investigation or not. Mm. I also think it is significant that the Minister's involvement in this pitch by her husband for this contract was hidden through redaction of an Official Information Act response. Yes. Do we know who well, made look, that I mean, decision? You shouldn't be surprised, uh, Sean, by this being the most open and transparent government. The, um, the black ink machine has been the most utilised in, in New Zealand's history in the last five years. Yeah. And we should say to people, redacted means, and I'm, const- uh, I'm constantly aware of using plain language these days, um, redacted yes, means me um, an official answer to your question, maybe a document that answers your question, but bits of it have had a black pen run through them so you That's don't right. know what all the information is. Uh, Simeon, yeah, can you, can you shed any light on who actually up. leaked the unredacted versions that showed that the minister was, on the face of it, into this up to her neck? No, I'm not sure about I'm not sure about that. And um, the reality is, I think what this just shows is that there's a, you know, some serious process questions around this. And um, again, this is the most open and transparent government that they are um, not willing to actually just be transparent about what is happening in their departments and trying to hide embarrassing information. You know that you are going to be accused of being racist for pursuing this story or this issue a- as a politician. What is your response to those who, who say you're just doing this because Nanaya Mahuta is Māori? Look, that's, that's anything but uh, the reason why I am pursuing this. The reason I'm pursuing this is because New Zealanders and taxpayers have high expectations around how their money is spent um, and how they expect conflicts of interest to be managed. And no one in New Zealand would say that uh, because there is a conflict doesn't preclude you from being able to do work uh, for the government. Uh, But what we do expect is we do expect robust processes in place to ensure that uh, where there are conflicts, uh, they're appropriately managed. And if there is someone else who can do the work who doesn't have a conflict, um, that that person should be preferred over and above the person who does have the conflict, assuming they've got the same set of skills and the appropriate skills to do that, that, that piece of work. And so it all comes back to making sure processes are being followed, uh, conflicts are declared appropriately, managed appropriately, um, and that way New Zealanders can have uh, a trust and confidence that the public service is acting in, a, in an unbiased manner with their taxpayers' money. Um, those are the questions that we've been asking about. It's nothing to do with race. It's simply about process, accountability, and holding the government to account for the fact that they're spending your money uh, on, on, on these contracts. Well, I do have to ask, Simeon, mean, how come then a guy of your seniority is leading the charge on this, not Chris Luxon? Does he want to stay away from issues like this because they're too potentially controversial? No, the, I've been asked as the public service uh, spokesperson in the National Party to uh, to look into these issues, and that's what I have been doing, asking questions uh, and the Official Information Act requests to get to the bottom of it. The reality is, um, you know, this has taken three or four months to get to this point in terms of being able to get enough information to be able to say, look, we, sh- we think we should write to the Public Service Commission um, and the reality is we want to make sure that there is good grounds to be to be pointing out these issues. And um, I know you and your program have been have been working very hard on this issue as well, and that's been uh, incredibly important to have those questions asked in the media. Um, and so I just think it's important that you, you, we, we, we get the information, we put the questions in, we do the Official Information Act, we get to the bottom of it so that we've got good grounds to be saying, actually, the Public Service Commission, we've seen it, uh, a lot of information it, it now seems to be the right time to be saying, actually, there's a time for a, a wider investigation. All right, we look forward to the response from the Public Service Commission, and I thank you indeed uh, for your time this morning, uh, uh, Simeon. That is uh, Simeon Brown, MP for Pakaranga, National MP. Yet more dirt, yet more questions, yet more uncertainty about the husband of Foreign Affairs Minister Nanaya Mahuta and the government contracts he gets uncontested, and in this case, a government contract the pitch for which included paying the minister some money, some government money. But we wouldn't have found that if we had relied on the Official Information Act because officials took her name out of the whole thing. They covered for her. And I think it is time the Public Service Commission got into it.